Hello and welcome to Comics with Jose. My name is Jose. I love comics and I want to share them with you. Follow me on Twitter at Art of Javales or on Instagram at Javales62 where I share some doodles that I work on and a little comic book story that I'm currently working on as well, free of charge. I do this for fun and I just enjoy talking and sharing comic books. Like, follow, and subscribe if you like the channel. We're going to go over comic book stories that I have. I own a lot of comic books over the years. We're going to use digital, however, because it's easier to share on digital on your uh, computer screen or phone. Hello, everyone. Thanks so much for joining me here. We're going to be looking at Marvel's, the Alex Ross work. So when I bought the Kingdom Come at that used bookstore, they also had this. I was very happy. I have the first trade paperback that came up. I did get these issues off the rack, but the um, uh, I don't know. This this has all like the extras and all that stuff that the other ones didn't have. So I picked it up because it's just phenomenal. This is the work that brought Alex Ross into stardom. Um, he was relatively unknown, and then this thing just elevated it. If you take a look at his work, you can see it's uh, it's not quite like what it is now, because this, again, this is early in his, uh, so, um, this is the issue zero. I don't know if the is issue zero was part of Wizard, or if it was... Uh, release, but I did not have this as a as a um, off the racks or whatever. So, Kurt Busiek is the writer, um, who's best known for his run on Avengers and Iron Man and um, the uh, Astro City, which I love. I have his uh, entire Astro City that he does with Brent Anderson. This is the creation of the original Human Torch from the 1930s, I believe. 30s or 40s. So this is what's kind of what's going on. This is a, a view of the early Marvel Universe. So... You can see that Alex Ross just had all the chops and everything that you know him now all started here. Now, this wasn't his first work. He had, uh, I do have his first appearance. This is J. Jonah Jameson. And then this is our protagonist, uh, Phil uh, something. Anyway, um, we're not really going to follow the story. It's just the basic, you know superheroes and stuff um, from the Marvel Universe. So he is here to see... Uh, he's like the, the person who gets to go through... And it's basically as if everything was real. So he's going to age, you know, from the 40s into the 60s. So this is um, kind of taking everything as if um, the Marvel Universe was real. And uh, just phenomenal, the, the art. And his work has evolved so much. It's just amazing. You compare it to what his work is now, and it'll, it'll look a little choppy. But, man, this, this dude, even early on, he had it. So it kind of deals with a little drama, but it just it it's always unfolded with the the Marvel universe and and the early stuff. So I mean, even the car you can see is uh, um, not like a new car. So this is this is treating as if everything happened when it did, in the same time frame. So. 
So again, this is J. Jonah Jameson. And they were talking kind of bad about the original Human Torch who happened to have been there. And you can see, because underneath his suit, or, or underneath his clothes was his suit, so... You just didn't see very many painted comic books like that, at least not in this style. I mean, you saw Bill Sinkovich um, when he did his stuff, but this was just very photorealistic, which is Alex Ross's style. Just amazing work. Amazing early work. It's just... You see him now doing all these covers, and he's, he's settled more now into how his current... So you can sort of see if you put yourself in, in that uh, time frame. So when these first came out, they came out in 1993. So it was uh, my first year in college. I just thought it was so cool. This is a double page spread, so sorry that I kind of skipped over it so quickly. But... You know, it was just unlike anything else you'd, you'd seen at that time. So the image had, uh, craze had started during that time. You know, it is just amazing. All the, you know, that time frame there in, nine, in the 90s when this came out, so... So this is basically the story of um, Phil Sheldon here. And as he goes through the early Marvel Universe. And here is where he's going to end up with an eye patch, And he's going to have it from this scene, I believe. Yeah. There's J. Jonah. You don't see him do this anymore. He kind of just created a thing. Uh, he doesn't do that. And so he marries his sweetheart. And now he's covering World War II. And the invaders. So, chapter two. So this is only four parts, so hopefully we should be able to get it going. And you saw their angel from the X-Men carrying a little mutant girl. So, now I believe we're in the 60s. You can see him. Um, he's a little older. This is after Captain America's return. And so, uh, oh, I forgot. You'll have to forgive me. Radioactive man. So, and look at this. Early on, he just showed you how amazing an illustrator he was. So the Fantastic Four, look at this, just coloring all these, oh wow. And Alex Ross doesn't draw digital. He draws, 
using real paints on real paper. Look at this, that's the introduction of the X-Men. Now, here's the thing. So if you look at the his where the shadow is, um, people were like, well, because, you know, uh, Cyclops and Jean Grey are together, so... Um, <laughs> Because he could have put that, he could have put the shadow over here, but he opted to do it here. So, you know what he was doing. The story is very good. Um, a lot of drama, because it's not your typical superhero story. And this is still in print, so you can you can if you don't have this series, you are able to get it because this book is in print. Marvel will keep this book in print forever. So Reed Richards is here, is where he's marrying the Invisible Woman. Here's Johnny Storm. Tony Stark. There's the thing. And the X-Men here. Here's Cyclops, Marvel Girl, and Professor X. Mutants were created by Stanley and Jack Kirby as um, a stand-in for black people during the civil rights movements. So that's what sort of the X-Men are. So. Very uh, cool. Just seeing the people in, in the costumes. You know, and they're wondering why the Fantastic Four are, you know, your celebrities, but mutants are, you know, everyone's out. You know, how do you know they're a mutant versus, you know, the Fantastic Four? They all have, you know, but again, as I always say, um, it's comic books. Let's not overthink it. They're dare, uh, Daredevil. So all the people are running because they saw a mutant. Or they believe there's a mutant, so. And, uh. And the mutant is this little girl that, uh. They've been keeping in the. The kids were keeping in the basement. And, uh. She's, uh. Gone, and, you know, it's very touching. Um. They couldn't take care of her anymore, and, um. They left and left her. Um, so. People were just being hysterical. So. They hide her. So this is what people believed from that mutants would do, so. And uh, I think he reaches out to the X-Men or to somebody. Right now, look at this. Just amazing. So in 19, imagine you're in 1993 and you know how what comics look like um, during that time. You know, there were still um, early early digital and stuff. And you see this. Just wow. And then here's Professor X. Uh, Sentinels. So the Sentinels turned on everyone. So now all of a sudden the TV is like, everybody's just left with their mouth open. 
So there's still, you know, this is kind of the mutant issue. And it's dealing just with different stuff going on through the Marvel Universe. And people just reacting poorly like they always do. And people just being human because that's how we are. Amazing, amazing uh, page here. So once the light shines on the people, the people just kind of see what they've done. And the guy's got to get to the house. And uh, she left because she didn't want to um, put them in, in danger. So the kids are very sad and... They ask if the kid's going to be alright, and he just doesn't know. But they hope so. Alright, book three. Silver Surfer on the cover. Just amazing talent. Alex Ross is just amazing talent. This is, uh, I think, Bill Urich from the Daily Bugle also. And they're both married to a Doris. <laughs> so that's where that joke came in, like, which Doris is calling? Again, uh, Tony Stark there. cool stuff so kind of moving along I'm trying to keep this from being too long so I know I tend to ramble on because I just I love comic books so here's Spider-Man J. Jonah Jameson yelling at him saying he's a menace some of the pictures he's taken and the red uh, red light uh, so that the pictures would develop and look at all the the fire this of course is dealing with the coming of Galactus and here comes the silver surfer and the human torch the new human torch from the Fantastic Four is gonna go meet him And Galactus has arrived. Great panel. So here comes the Fantastic Four. And here's the Watcher. Just amazing, amazing stuff. This is just great. Everybody thinks they're going to die. Wow. Good double page spread. Alex Ross uses a lot of reference. But that does not diminish his skill. That is uh, 
this dude can what what a craftsman i wish his pieces even his drawings weren't so expensive but you know he's a left-wing capitalist i always find that funny just um how you know nothing's affordable poor people need not uh don't, don't need to you know because the amount of money that he sells even a a, just a piece a drawing on a piece of paper it's nothing that just the average person could buy like I couldn't afford anything from Alex Ross which is a shame but it is what it is so Reed gives him the ultimate nullifier the he gets rid of the silver surfer you know you, if you've seen the coming of if you've read the coming of Galactus through the Fantastic Four, then you sort of know the whole story. So. There's Peter Parker. Looks like Don Knotts. So, part four, the last one, which we're going to deal with the death of Gwen Stacy. So, now we're in the 70s. Oopsie. Look at that spread. So again, everybody's aging. So it's the Black Widow. Just letting everybody take in the art. Look at that. Spider-Man climbing. There's Robbie Robertson. So, book one dealt with the um, 40s, and book two and um, three dealt with the 60s, and now we're in the 70s for book four. This is Captain Stacy. Man, what an amazing craftsman. What an amazing um, painter, artist. Marvel did a sequel to this, but I did not get it. And then last year, I think they also did another, uh, which Alex Ross was involved, but I uh, didn't pick it up. I'll probably just pick it up on a trade. Comic books are too expensive nowadays, so I have to get things secondhand. One of the secondhand stores that we have here um, sells comics too, so for not too bad. So, so that's how I get still collect because there's no way I'm paying five, six dollars for some of these things. There's Gwen Stacy.
And so he kind of liked her, not in a like boyfriend girlfriend way, but he sees the goblin taking her. So of course he's gonna. Spoiler alert: If you've never read or know the history of Gwen Stacy, Green Goblin, um, where she dies, he doesn't. He drops her, and nobody knows whether she was dead before he threw her, or if Spider-Man killed her when he tried to catch her using his web. And she snapped her neck. So here she goes and falls, and so the theory is that when he gets her it snaps her neck so because the green goblin threw her so of course the green goblin was norman osborne well it is because he's back and uh And so we're seeing some of the stuff that happened in the Marvel Universe during that, the 70s. So, kind of with the vision of the Scarlet Witch blossoming a romance. So, he's upset about Gwen Stacy. So, takes a picture of his fa of the kid takes a picture of the family. Thus ends the the series. Now there is an epilogue that Alex Ross drew uh, before the release of this, more in his contemporary style. So, also dealing with the seventies. There's Wolverine. It's stuff that didn't get included in that book four, but so, and of course this is from the X Men where the um, they're celebrating Christmas but are attacked by the Sentinels, which there they are. What an amazing, amazing artist he is. There's Storm. So this this part here with the X-Men was not part of the original release. This was just released uh, maybe 10 years ago, I believe. Just very cool. I mean, how how tedious can you imagine painting all this? Just wow. Very cool here. And thus ends our story. So here are a couple of his... Uh, um, sketches. Some sketches and studies that he had done. If you manage to find this in, in a collection, get that. Um, don't worry about the original issues, man. This thing comes with so many cool things, so... So cool. Black Widow, Gwen Stacy with Spider Man. Oh, Black Panther. 
he got a double page spread. He never did the hobgoblin. So this book has a ton of extras, but rather than just continue on because, you know, it's already 30 minutes, we're just going to stop it here. Just a couple of um, things of how he uses photo reference so to create these things. So um, Marvels by Alex Ross from 1993. Like and subscribe and thanks for listening.